Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Chaitra Asnarathar. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist from Bangalore. Well, today we decided to talk about a very uncommon condition, but reading her mail actually made me think about this and I really wanted to talk about this to people so women actually are aware of this. She didn't have any problem with me sharing the history and so I am going to go ahead. She wrote saying that um, she has been trying to conceive for a long time and over a period of time a lot of investigations were done and after a detailed investigation they found that both her fallopian tubes were blocked. So the doctor suggested we do a laparoscopy and in case things are not in your favour we go ahead and do an IVF. Well this is what she had written to me. Now I will talk to you in detail about this particular condition. What is a fallopian tube? I am sure most of you all are aware that there is a uterus which has two tubes on either side of it which is called the fallopian tubes which is going to catch the eggs and transfer it to the uterus. Now the natural process is after the ovulation occurs when the egg is released from the ovary it travels through the fallopian tubes and is waiting in the fallopian tube to become pregnant. So pregnancy occurs in the fallopian tube, yes. So the sperm which is ejaculated in the vagina swims all the way till the till to reach the egg which is in the fallopian tube. Now as I already told you, the uh, egg is waiting in the fallopian tube to be fertilized to become an embryo. So the sperm swims up and pregnancy occurs in the fallopian tubes. So fallopian tubes are on either sides of the uterus. So the pregnancy occurs in the fallopian tubes and it is nourished there for a duration of 4 to 5 days and then it travels down to the uterus to get implanted and grow in the uterus. So if the tubes are blocked then what? The egg can either come, the sperm can either reach the egg. So the fertilization doesn't occur, so the pregnancy doesn't occur. So most of the time women come with infertility, yes. So most of them do present with infertility. Blockage of the tube constitutes to around 30% of the cause of infertility in women. Now what do we do about this? How do we know that the tubes are blocked? As I already said, until and unless we, you are planning pregnancy and it is not happening, we are not even aware that the tube can be the cause. Some minute um, symptoms that you can have will be that there will be a little amount of uh, lower abdomen pain and little bit of uh, discharge from the vagina and sometimes it can be foul smelling vaginal discharge. Now what are the causes why the tube gets blocked? The common causes why it gets blocked will be because of an infection in the pelvis, pelvic inflammatory disease. Infections can cause a lot of adhesions, can spoil the uterus, the tubes, the, sorry sir. The common cause why what are the causes which are been, sorry sir, Tirga, sorry. the common causes why the tube gets blocked are the pelvic inflammatory disease, certain sexually transmitted conditions like chlamydia and gonorrhea. Also, if there was previously an ectopic pregnancy in the tube, ectopic is when the pregnancy is growing in the fallopian tube uh, or anywhere outside the uterine cavity. So when it is growing in the fallopian tubes and it ruptures or it distorts the tube. Also, if there was any other previous abdominal surgeries which led to little bit of adhesions or also if there was previously a surgical condition like an appendix which ruptured causing severe infection which caused adhesions again. Also, the tube can get blocked in a condition called endometriosis wherein there is a lot of adhesions around the tube, peritubular adhesions. Also, in our country, we do see Tuberculosis to be one of the causes why the tubes get blocked and this is most of the time bilateral on both the sides. So these are the common causes why the tube gets blocked. Now how do we know that the tubes are blocked? Most of the time a simple procedure called the HSG is performed, hysterosalpingography, wherein a dye is injected through the cervix into the uterine cavity and we capture it by taking an x-ray and seeing the dye flow. If the tubes are normal and patent, the dye flows through the tube and flows into the pelvis. So this is called HSG. Now apart from this, once an HSG is done and we do find there is some amount of blockage in the tube, then what we do next will be a laparoscopic surgery. 
a laparoscopic surgery is a very small surgery where a small incision is made on the abdomen and we put in a camera through one port and maybe some instrument to manipulate if required. So even in this process, we put in the small cannula and we put in a small camera through it to see it directly. Even here, we will be pushing the dye through the cervix which flows into the fallopian tubes. The advantage of doing a laparoscope will be if we do find some adhesions there, we can go ahead and finish the release of the adhesions and if the adhesions are simple, we can release it. Also, if there is some blockage in the tube, we can do something called uh, recanalization, wherein we put a small tube-like structure through the tube to clean it so we can make the tunnel come back or we can clear the tube. So this is a procedure which can be done. But if the additions are too bad, then it is difficult to be performing uh, laparoscopic surgery also. So in these kind of conditions, when the tubes are completely distorted, what we suggest will be a IVF pregnancy wherein the baby is formed in the outside tube. Do not have to get worried because most of the conditions are treatable and correctable surgically. But if it is not, then we as well choose the easier option. So please don't worry and I'm sure things will go really great.